Good morning. Uh, we are back, kids, and uh, today we have Martin Gramatico with us. Good morning, Martin. How are you? Hey, good morning, Jim. How are you this morning? Doing great. Kids, uh, Martin uh, has uh, a great uh, story to tell about himself, but I'm going to let him do that. Martin, tell us, tell the kids about yourself. We're talking to third, fourth, and fifth graders now. Well, I'm sure they're a little too young, so they don't, they won't recognize me too much. Maybe the parents will, you know. I, <laughs> I, uh, I played for the Bucks. I've been retired now for a few years, but I started, uh, well, I'm originally from Argentina, and uh, I came to the United States when I was nine, played soccer my whole life. That was, uh, that was my passion. That's what I love to do, and I wanted to be a soccer player, but, you know, in the United States, um, soccer at that time wasn't the most popular sport, didn't really have too much of a future, so I decided to start kicking, and uh, kicked my senior year in high school. It was my first time ever kicking a football, and well, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go to Kansas State. I was able to get my education at, at Kansas State, and then from there, uh, drafted by the Bucks, and uh, and was uh, thankfully I was in the, uh, the, the the time when the team was actually really good, and we won the Super Bowl in 2003. So that was. Uh, uh, you know, a good time to be a Buccaneer. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Martin, uh, tell us a little bit about Coach Dungey. Well, Coach Dungey is what you see is what you get. He's uh, probably the best role model any athlete could ever ask for. Um, you know, I had a million conversations with him, and I would say 99% of had nothing to do with football. He's, uh, he's more concerned about your life, your family, your kids. Um, you know, I, I, a funny story is when I retired, you know, my kids were starting to play soccer. They were playing in, like, a church league, and he had adopted a, a, a kid the same age as my son. So we were sitting there both as parents <laughs> watching our, you know, four-year-olds, five-year-olds play soccer. And I couldn't believe that this father figure that I had as a coach, you know, I'm sitting now we're, you know, both sitting, standing, watching our kids play soccer. I never would have dreamt that that would ever happen. But it was a great experience because we were able to talk about life, and I I gained a lot more out of those conversations probably than, than any football conversation I ever had with Coach Dungey. That's always the way, isn't it? Those conversations are uh, those informal conversations. That's where we that's where we really learn about each other. Um, we when I was coaching at Carrollwood Day School, we and he had his kids there. We we had a, a, a running plan in our team that if Coach Dungey ever walked out near the fields to kick a ball out in front of him so that one of the boys would have to run and get it and then and then just naturally sort of cross paths with him and see you know if that led to anything so anyway but uh coach uh could or martin uh what kind of a kid were you when you moved from argentina age 9 10 11 what kind of what kind of a kid was young martin well, it was a tough time in our lives because, you know, we're moving uh, from a country that doesn't speak English. So, we, yeah, when we got to the United States, we couldn't really communicate with anybody. So it was really tough at the beginning. Just, you know, in school, you know, you sit there, you can't really communicate. Our, our Spanish is a little different than the other kids' Spanish. So those kids didn't understand or didn't want to really hang out. So it, it created a big bond between my brothers and I, you know, just because that's really all we had at the moment. And then, uh, and then for that, from there, once we started, you know, getting, becoming friends with kids and getting more ingrained in, in the, in the school and, and playing sports with them, then, uh, but, uh, my, my thing was always, uh, athletics. I love playing sports. I love being outside. You know, back then we didn't have the iPads, you know, phones, any of that <laughs> video games. So, our, our, our only toy was really a soccer ball. So we spent all day, every day playing soccer outside. Just, uh, that's, that, that's what I can remember. That's, uh, that was, those were the fun days. That's beautiful. Do you remember a PE class at school in those days? Oh, yes. I re no, PE was uh, my favorite subject. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I, I love the fact because, like, in Argentina, when you go to PE class, is um, it's called physical education. So they teach you how to stretch. They teach you how to warm up. But you don't play any sports. So it was kind of, it was fun, but it was boring. You know, we wanted to play sports. So when we came to the United States, peak class, you know, you do a lot of activities, but you also play a lot of sports. We, we're, we're taught different sports here. So I loved it. I couldn't believe that we actually were able to use the ball in PE class, where in South America at the time, we weren't allowed to use any balls. It was all about our bodies. So 
Uh, no, I enjoyed it just because we were able to play a lot of sports. And I, I was able to learn a lot of sports. When I came uh, to the United States, all I really ever played before was soccer, tennis, and I knew rugby. Rugby is big in Argentina. Besides that, I never saw or played baseball, football, basketball. This, you know, so these are sports that were very new to us, but uh, but it was fun to fun to, get, to learn and play with uh, with our friends. I remember uh, watching and following your story when you when you became a college kicker and then a professional, and this I, such a unique story that uh, you know moving from Argentina at the age of nine. I mean, there really isn't anybody that I know that has a similar story to yours, and and it's and it's kind of captivating. So. You you joined you became a kicker if I recall right in your senior year of high school is that right? Yes. Okay. We um, so I played soccer. My my brothers and I were the we lived in a small town here in Florida, LaBelle, and we didn't have a soccer team. We didn't have a school team, so I would travel, you know, to Fort Myers, Naples to uh, to to traveling team. So our school knew that we were the only soccer players in our town, basically. So they're like, hey, do you guys want to try and help us out and help kick? And that's basically the way it started. You know, we were just, I was only going to do it one year just to help my school out. And and from there, uh, I was going to go back to playing soccer because that's really what I love. So uh, it just worked out perfect. You know, we, our first uh, practice, the coach, we had a restaurant, comes to the restaurant, and it's like, oh, these kids are amazing. They're going to go to college. They're going to go to pros. Uh, but looking back, we really weren't that good. It's just that the other kickers were that, that bad. You know, we had a, we had a big lineman. That used to straight on kick field goals, so he didn't make that many. So if you just made a few kicks, you were better than that guy. So that's, but um, but I, I, I mean, I, I couldn't draw it up any better. It worked out pretty good. It's a great example of the difference a coach can make in a kid's life, isn't it? Um, so my, my next question is, what when you went to become a college kicker in the NFL, you played in the Super Bowl. I remember when you came to Cypress Woods the last time you came, you said, after watching the kids, you said, uh, you talked about the feeling in the dressing room before the Super Bowl, how special it was. Uh, what was it like to be a kicker, to be in the NFL, to play in the Super Bowl? Talk, what was that like? Well, for me, it was uh, the most amazing thing. I never in my wildest dreams would have ever dreamt that I would be playing in a Super Bowl. You know, growing up uh, in South America, always loving soccer. My dream was, you know, to play for the national team, to play, win a World Cup, and and now all of a sudden I'm sitting in a uh, locker room waiting for the beginning of the Super Bowl. I never ever would have imagined, but it just shows you. To me, it shows you how great this country is, and, and if you work hard at the opportunities that you get. Because if it wasn't for this country, I don't know if I would have been able to reach any of my goals. You know, and and, and that's what we have here. This, this country, if you work hard. And you keep trying, and it doesn't matter what it is, if it's sports, education, whatever it is, if you work hard, you have a future. And I couldn't believe that I was sitting there uh, next to my teammates waiting to, to play a Super Bowl. It was, uh, it was a dream come true because once I started playing football, that was a dream. You know, once I started playing, I wanted to win a championship, wanted to win a Super Bowl. But before I started playing football, I didn't even know what the Super Bowl was, basically. That, that's, that's awesome. I, I just want you to know that when you came last time, after watching the kids perform their routines to the music, um, you said to them, uh, I haven't felt like this very often, but one of the times I felt like this was in the locker room before the Super Bowl, where I was excited by something that was about to happen. And I've retold that story every year to the kids. It really motivates them, it really gets them fired up. Uh, could you tell us about uh, SIPs and your home building mission, especially about the uh, your idea of helping the the military guys. Well, that's uh, we talked a little bit about Coach Dungey a little bit earlier, and uh, that's one of the things that he uh, basically taught all of us. Every player is to give back to your community and to, to help out. And I really didn't know what charity work was until I came to the box and, and met Coach Dungey because my rookie year. Um, Derek Brooks was taking, I think it was 25 kids to Africa, and he was doing these mission trips with all these kids. And I'm thinking, how do you do this? You know, how, do, how does this work? And it's just, you know, you create a foundation. And what we wanted to do with ours, um, I have a company that does uh, energy efficient homes or energy efficient uh, buildings. And we wanted to build homes for combat wounded veterans. We figure, you know, we, we want to give back. I want to thank them. I want to thank every, every veteran for the freedoms that we have in this country. Because if it wasn't for them, 
uh, we wouldn't be the greatest country in the world. So I just, I, I just figured this is a way uh, as a family that we can thank them and, and just give back. And, and I wanted to thank Coach Dungey for leading us in that direction because if it wasn't for him, you know, a lot of us probably wouldn't even know what charity work was. Well, well, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to come to Cypress Woods when you did and to and to give your attention to our kids and their and their musical routines and and uh, talk to them and talk to us here in this in this video. It's great. It's it's awesome. Uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I want to ask you. Did, did you do you remember those routines? Do you remember uh, their their uh, the kids moving to music and do do you have any impressions about it? No, I loved it. It was a lot of energy. That's one of the things I I remember the most is the energy and the excitement. And it usually, you know, when you when you have a PE class, you have the kids that love sports that are always excited to be outside and running. And then you have some that may be more on the electronic side or really or don't really like the sports or being outside. And and you can see them in the corner, kind of pouting a little bit. In the, in your class, I I didn't see that at all. Everybody was excited. Everybody was moving and uh, their routines and uh it was just a, a fun environment and i think that's uh and it, it was engaging you know every kid was involved it wasn't that it was just a, a small group so uh I, I still remember that it was a lot of fun uh but i do it before we we leave or kind of we're almost done but i want to thank you because you're you're the one that first guy that gave me a chance to coach soccer and that's my passion that's what i love and i don't know if i would have i don't know if i would have got invited or even started coaching if, if you didn't uh help me out and let me uh be part of your group uh, when we were coaching. I think almost almost ten years ago now. So yes, it is. Time flies. Martin, I remember when you came uh, to to uh, with your kids to play soccer, and being uh, a fan of yours and studying your story and knowing your love of soccer, it just clicked in my mind right away. We can't let this guy sit in this lawn chair here. We got to at least give him the <laughs> chance to get involved, and he can say no if he wants to, but. You know, somebody's got to at least open that door. So I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, what do you, you have kids in school? Uh, two more questions. You have kids in school. What do you hope PE is for them? Well, they come home and, and, and talk about how much fun they had. And to me, it's a, it's a way of them to be able to express themselves and, and, and go out and play. Go outside, have fun, and play. Because a lot of times, you know, these kids these days, they're inside. They're on. They're on their, their electronics, or it's too hot, or too humid, or there's always an excuse to be inside and not outside. So for me, it's a it's a way for them to have fun with their classmates and also be be outside and, and, and active. You know, active. That's uh, that's the best way to stay healthy. Yeah. That, that, do you have any advice for, especially you're you're coaching now? Um, there are kids watching this that are thinking in their minds they might want to be a teacher, they might want to be a coach. What would you say to those kids that would be important if that's a, the career they pursue? Well, uh, anything you pursue, you have to do, do with passion, and you have to love it. So if that's something that your your heart's telling you you need to do or you want to do, uh, do it, but you have to do it with 100% effort. The one thing that uh, drives me crazy is when I see somebody – doing something half speed or, or, or not giving everything they have. And a lot of times you see uh, coaches that coach for their own curriculum, their own agendas, and they don't take care of the kids. The pri our priority as coaches is to make sure we get the best out of the athletes we get, and not only make them better players, but make them better people. And that's, that, again, going back to Coach Dungey, uh, he, he was more concerned that we were a better person than we were a better athlete. And that's the, at a professional level. So at a youth level, if we put sports before making them better people, then we're crazy. So that's why if you want to be a coach and if you want to, uh, you know, uh, motivate kids and, and change kids' lives, uh, to me, it's putting them first and making sure that we meet all their needs, you know, whatever their needs. Every kid's different. And, and that's the one thing. Um, th you can't coach every kid the same as well. You know, every kid responds differently. And get to know the kids. My, what I do in my, my coaching philosophy is I create a, a relationship with the kids first before I can push them. You know, a lot of times coaches start pushing kids right away and the kid ends up hating the coach because they don't create a relationship. Once they trust you and, and you create a relationship with the kid, then you can get more out of them than, than if you just, you know, start screaming and yelling right off the bat. Yeah, that takes a little effort, but not much. It's I feel the same way about the importance of relationships and and kids, I'll tell you this, uh, when, when Martine and I worked together, uh, we used to have a free play night 
uh, where the kids could just come and play soccer, just play, no, no coaching. And Martine was always there and always playing with the kids. And I remember you out on the field just talking with kids randomly here or there, just having a good positive word, just spreading the word of that good feeling and that good relationship among the kids. I, I think I agree with you. I think that's really important. But I just want to thank you very much for doing this, Martine. I know you've got the radio show to get to today. And uh, no problem. We'll, be, uh, we'll be in touch, okay? All right, Jim. Well, thank you, and uh, good luck to all the kids, and uh, be safe, everyone. Thank you, Martine.